Hello everyone, Rob here from California Hike and Bike. I gotta admit, I struggled a little bit about whether or not to do this video, but today I'm gonna have a frank discussion with you about my experience having a TERP procedure, which is uh, basically a prostate reduction procedure. So I'm not a medical doctor, but there's gonna be some good information in here about what I experienced and how you should prepare and what you might experience post-surgery, so stick around. This may be what you need to know. In the week or two prior to your surgery, do yourself a favor and pick up the items I have listed below in the description. You will thank me later once you have these after you come home from surgery because it will make your life a heck of a lot easier. The links are below in the description. They're Amazon affiliate links. I get a small commission. It helps to support my uh, channel, um, but it doesn't cost you anything to do that. So please use those affiliate links and let's go. On the day of surgery, you're going to want to arrive early. Uh, my time to arrive was 6 a.m. I actually got there about 5.40. We live about 45 minutes away, so I wanted to give myself plenty of time to get there. Um, you're gonna wanna wear comfortable clothes, um, clothes that you'll probably wear home uh, after the surgery the next day. Some people, I guess, stay two nights, but I only stayed one night. And you're going to want to bring a pair of absorbable underwear. Um, I've got those linked down below as well. Um, it's going to be very important for your ride home because you don't want to leak. And I'll get to that here in just a couple minutes. After I woke up, I felt woozy, of course. Um, but I really didn't have much pain due to the meds that they had given me um, to put me under. And it still hadn't worn off yet. Uh, they gave me several meds through an IV. Uh, it included antispasm meds to calm my bladder down, antibiotics to mitigate uh, urinary tract infection, and pain meds um, that were deliverable through the IV uh, with a push button. And every so often, I think it was every 15 or 30 minutes, uh, a, a very small amount became available via the push button. Low-grade pain medication that wore off very quickly actually. Eventually about mid-afternoon um, the the push button low-grade paid medication just wasn't doing the trick. I wasn't in a lot of pain but I was pretty uncomfortable um, and this is the day of the surgery so day one um, and so they offered me a choice of two other stronger, stronger oral medications um, one was Narcan and the other one was something even stronger. I don't even remember the name of it. I chose to go with the lesser of the two, which was Narcan. They offered me two pills at a time. I took two pills the first time. After that, um, I just did one pill. I was also able to use the push button in conjunction with that. Um, after taking the first two of the oral pills and then one each, through the night, um, I didn't take any more after that um, at the hospital. I, I did use the, uh, uh, the push button um, through the night as well, but the next day I felt pretty good and, and I didn't use any painkillers, except for I did take one uh, right before I was discharged about one o'clock in the afternoon to go home. I, I, and our home uh, is about 45 minutes away, so I just didn't want to be uncomfortable riding home. You will have a catheter installed uh, when you wake up from surgery and uh, during the first uh, 24 hours or so post-surgery they will have uh, like IV bags hanging there with uh, I believe it's just a saline solution a sterile saline solution that will be connected to your uh, there's three prongs that come out of the uh, connections for your catheter bag one of those prongs is for them to actually connect those saline bags and uh, continuously flush your bladder. So it's continuously going in and then coming out of your catheter. You don't really feel it, uh, except for when they empty it, there's a little bit of a vacuum. And, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. 
Um, during this time, the fluid that's coming out is going to be uh, mostly a pinkish tint um, because there's blood and in the in the uh, urine, and that's perfectly normal. So, um, and that will be perfectly normal as I talk about these first uh, eight days, nine days um, post surgery. Okay. So on day two of surgery, meaning the day after surgery, uh, when I went home after I took that pill, um, I put my sweats on. I didn't put any underwear on because frankly, it just didn't feel very comfortable. Um, I did, however, put on uh, an absorbable Depends style, you know, adult diaper, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you want to make sure you pick those up um, and have one available for the ride home because there's going to be leakage and you don't want to get that over your, you know, on your car or on your clothing. And, uh, uh, you know, what can I say? I, I, I hate that I had to wear them, um, but it will make your life a hell of a lot easier. And um, I'm actually still wearing one right now because on day nine, which is day nine of surgery for me, uh, as I sit here, I'm still having a little bit of leakage, um, bloody leakage, um, after I go to the bathroom especially. So uh, you're gonna be wearing those for probably a couple weeks after surgery. Um, right now it's just very little, so I may be able to stop tomorrow or the next day. Um, but you wanna pick those up, very important and very convenient. They will give you two catheter bags um, to take home with you. The one that you'll have as you're going home is a smaller one that uh, straps to your leg, your lower leg. Um, and the other one is a larger one that you're going to use probably 90% of the time because you're going to be around the house as you're recovering from this um, while you have the catheter, that is. In terms of length of time for me, I think it was more because it was over a holiday weekend, um, which was Christmas weekend for me. The doctor's office was closed on Friday and on Monday, I had the surgery on Thursday, so I ended up having to wait till Tuesday morning to have the catheter removed. The larger catheter bag is very convenient. It's got a hook on it, so you can actually hook it to your bed frame. When I was sitting on the couch, I was able to hook it to a, a basket that was sitting under the uh, uh, side table that I have, the end table that I have. Um, so it's very convenient. And even more importantly, and I'll talk about taking showers later in this video, but it's really important because that hook, I was able to hook it onto the handle of our shower door while I took showers, and it was extremely convenient for that purpose. So you'll have those. Um, I, I put a link down below for some uh, adhesive gauze. Use that get that before your surgery because you'll want to use that to um, strap the tubing to your leg. I've read some places that you don't um, strap it to your leg, but for me, it was much more comfortable. Um, they give you a strap that comes with the catheter, but the adhesive is much more, the adhesive gauze is much more comfortable to use, especially when you're having to walk around the house or move around or at night when you're sleeping and you turn a little bit, you don't want that thing pulling on you, if you know what I mean. So days two through five, um, I got a lot of rest. I, I just basically sat around or laid around in bed. Um, I didn't want to move a lot. Um, it, it is uncomfortable with that stupid catheter in. Um, but probably the most important thing is to just drink a ton of water. Um, my doctor asked us to log how much um, I was expelling into the catheter and I was literally doing 750 to 1100 milliliters, I think it's milliliters, it's the marks on the, you'll see it, um, but I think it's milliliters, so 750 to 1100 of water every two hours I was expelling. Um, it basically had the effect of going right through my system and flushing it out. In days two through five, in terms of pain, um, 
I didn't really take any pain pills during that time except for at bedtime um, to help me sleep through the night. I wasn't really in that much pain, but I figured, you know, if I took the edge off, I'd get better rest. And, you know, that's good for your body, obviously, while, I, while in recovery mode. So um, the pain isn't really that bad. I'm going to be frank with you. The catheter is what caused me the most um, pain, and it was more of an annoyance. Uh, it's really important. Another purchase that you want is to get some of the uh, uh, body fluid lube, um, like a KY jelly type thing. And you're basically going to want to, uh, as you after you clean the tube off, because there's going to be dried blood on your tube, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but there's going to be dried blood right where it inserts inside you. And as you move around, it causes friction and it stings, it burns. So you're going to want to keep that clean and you're going to want to keep it lubed up. You just put a little dollop on your finger and, and lube it up about a, uh, I, you know, I lubed the tip of my uh, penis and I also um, lubed up the tube so that as it slid in and out a little bit, it didn't cause that friction and uh, really eliminated or at least alleviated most of the pain. You're going to want to pick up urinary pain pills um, or urinary pain relief pills. I've got those linked in the description as well. There's a picture of them right here. These pills will help with the burning sensation while the catheter is in. And then especially um, from the days after post catheter, um, it really helped me with the burning. I tried it a couple days without, and then when I started taking them again, um, I could tell the difference. So make sure you get the uh, urinary pain relief pills. It's like if you have a, uh, it's like if you were to have a urinary tract infection, it's, it's that kind of a stinging or burning except amplified. And these pills really take the edge off of that. So during those days, two through five, um, while I still had the catheter, catheter in, so my wife and I are empty nesters. And during that time, it was just easier for me to walk around naked under a robe. Uh, I didn't want any pants or any underwear uh, except for the absorbent underwear. Um, but frankly, when I was um, home during that time, I didn't even wear the absorbent underwear. I used absorbent pads because it was much more comfortable. Putting anything on there that constricts it at all makes it just don't do it. <laughs> you're, you're not going to like that part. So I, uh, I also link the absorbent pads down there. That's another thing that's going to make your life a lot easier because you're going to want to put those uh, under you when you lay down in bed. You're going to put it uh, down anywhere you're sitting down. And then I also put it underneath the catheter bag in case there was a small amount of leakage, which there was but not from the bag. It was actually from the blood um, traveling, dripping just a little bit and traveling down the tube. Um, when I say, when I talk about this bleeding, it's not really a lot. Don't freak out about that, but it can get messy because that's what blood is. It's just messy. Um, so there you go. Um, days two through five. So now, while the catheter is in, one of the things that I did that, helped a great deal was rather than try to clean that tube um, by you know by holding it and, and scraping the the dried blood off the thing that made it really really easy was I was taking two to four showers a day usually three showers sometimes four um, and the reason was because it's really comfortable being inside the shower and being able to clean everything off down there. Um, you can hang the bag. Hopefully you have a shower door handle that the bag will hook through um, and you can uh, hang it there. But I'm sure you can find out, figure out some other way to, to take care of that bag. You wanna try to keep it away from um, getting wet under the shower. And my shower worked perfectly for that. Um, the other thing that does is Every time you clean that bag, it gives you relief because there's no more dried blood on there. You can lube it up and as it moves in and out a little bit, 
And what I mean by that is anytime you move, it creates a little bit of movement with that tube. Um, whether you're walking or, like I said, turning over a bed or just repositioning yourself in a chair. Um, so you want to keep that as clean as possible and the best way to do that is in the shower. I had what I would probably characterize as spasms every once in a while. It was pretty infrequent, but it happened, I noticed, on two occasions um, most of the time. And what that was was um, in the shower, um, sometimes you get the, the sensation when you're just taking a normal shower that you have to pee, right? You get that urge. The problem with that is when you have the catheter in, if you try to push that out a little bit, what it actually does is it pushes blood through um, the wall of your pe between the wall of your penis and um, the tube that uh, is inserted for the catheter. So it actually comes out between those two things and then runs down the catheter tube. So you don't want to push. You'll get the urge, but don't push. And the same thing happens when you're having a bowel movement. So um, expect that to happen. Uh, it doesn't happen very frequently, but you will feel it, and that's what you're feeling. And it's perfectly normal. Okay, so it's day five post-surgery um, and it was time for me to have my catheter removed and it couldn't come soon enough. A catheter, to be honest with you, is a big pain in that you know what, not the ass. <laughs> Anyways, before the doctor removed the catheter, um, there's a couple things that he had to do. First, he had to remove the solution. There's a balloon on the end of the catheter that um, I'm not quite sure exactly what it does but basically it's in your bladder and it's pumped up with the solution. So I talked about those three prongs that come off of the tube that's inserted into you. One of those prongs is also to remove, either put in or remove solution. And so he did that um, by removing the solution through one of those prongs. Then what he did was he injected what he told me, 200, I believe it was milliliters, of sterile solution back into my bladder to give me a head start rather than drinking a bunch of water so that by the time I got home I was ready to pee. Now my doctor told me and it may be a little bit different with your doctor but he told me if I didn't pee within two hours I needed to come back into the office. Um, the good thing is, the good news is I did uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So you're probably wondering whether or not it was painful having the catheter removed. I wouldn't really describe it as pain, although I do have a pretty high pain threshold. Um, it was more uncomfortable than painful. So uh, I talked about the absorbent underwear that I linked below. Um, you want to get some of those, especially for the trip back home post catheter, because that's when you're going to have uh, probably the most um, leakage. Um, it's just a little bit of blood seepage and over the next few days it's really important to have those absorbent underwear because uh, every time you pee you're gonna have leakage of a little bit of blood it's not a lot but it's enough to get messy so make sure you get them I'm telling you I warned you so when I got home after a little while I did need to urinate it was probably about uh, maybe an hour, hour and five minutes uh, after the catheter was removed. And um, I'm gonna be honest with you, that first urination was the most pain I experienced during this whole procedure. Um, it, and it, and it, was, it was a fleeting pain. It, it was sharp, uh, stinging, um, and it, but it went away pretty quick. Um, and I think the reason is because what I did notice, I, you know, as I was watching, um, pieces of either skin or scabs um, from the surgery was, was flushed out. And the one thing that I can tell you is like it was a freaking waterfall. It was awesome. Um, and that made it worth it. I didn't even care about the pain because I, uh, I was kind of like looking down. I was like, wow, that is incredible. And it's been like that ever since. And hopefully, you know, I've heard about some of the complications. 
I have had nothing yet, but um, man, it is nice. You will love that part. Days six, seven, and eight, um, post catheter were a little bit of a roller coaster, meaning that sometimes it was uh, painful when I peed, sometimes I bled a lot more, sometimes I pushed a lot more, uh, either uh, like a small coagulated blood or scab, I couldn't tell which was which. Um, but you're, you, you want to drink a lot of water and flush that stuff out. It's very important. Um, I will tell you though, I did mention it already, but I'm going to mention it again. The urinary pain relief pills will help you during this time frame, uh, for the first probably three to five days after you have the catheter removed because it does sting when you pee and, uh, that will take the edge of that off of that and relieve, give you a little bit of relief. Um, and what can I say? It's welcome relief. So they say that about a week after your surgery is when the uh, scabs will start to, um, you know, peel off and be flushed out when you urinate. And I definitely can confirm that. Um, the very first time I did and a little bit comes out almost every time I pee, frankly. And like I said, I can't tell really if that's coagulated blood or pieces of the uh, scab or, or removal remnants of the surgery. I'm not quite sure, um, but they told me that was going to be normal. And uh, I still had and still do have on days seven, eight, and nine, um, today is day nine, I think, of this surgery. And um, so I still have a, a slight pinkish tint um, to my urine and uh, be expectant of that because it's completely normal. Okay, so that's it. That's day of surgery through day nine of surgery. Um, as I sit here, day nine, I feel pretty good. In fact, this is the dangerous part because I'm pretty active. I'm a pretty fit guy and uh, I feel good and I gotta be very careful to not pick up, you know, the grandkids because they weigh more than 20 pounds or just moving around and doing stuff around the house. I'm feeling really well. This is actually New Year's Eve and I'd really like to have a glass of wine or, or drink tonight, but I'm gonna refrain because you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to drink uh, any caffeinated sodas, uh, coffee, alcoholic drinks. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I still have my morning coffee. Screw it. Um, and it hasn't caused me any problems. So remember, I'm going to wrap it up, but remember there's four things that you must get prior to your surgery. The absorbent underwear, uh, the urinary pain relief, the absorbent pads for your bed and couch or anywhere else you're going to sit and the adhesive gauze to secure the tubing of your um, catheter. All of those are linked down in the description. One more thing though about the absorbent underwear. I got mine oversized. So I'm about a 34 to 36 and I got ones that were something like 38 to 40. Uh, and I did that on purpose. I wanted them, to, I wanted to have a little room down there. Okay. All right, man. Good luck with your surgery. And, uh, uh, write in the comments down below if this was, was helpful or if you have any other questions, I'd be glad to answer if I can. All right, everybody. Happy New Year. Have a great one. Yeah, oh my Lord, watch me sway. Darkness falls and we all pray. Hoping for the light of day down to the river.